States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval. I need, um, need a motion to accept the correspondence in the read file. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Time for the public forum. This is the time when uh, if someone wants to address something that's not on the agenda, they could do so. He or she could do so. Sean. I do, although it is. It pertains to the budget, so I'm not exactly sure what aspect of the budget right. you're going to go over. Uh, this has to do with the capital plan and the budget document specifically, so I can either wait or discuss. I don't know much I have if he wants to go now. I know Frank's going to give an update on, so on, the, on the process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any problem with what do you have? What, you know, what, we'll listen to you for a few minutes, Sean, and then we'll get into the, the meeting. Thank you. Uh, I was just looking for an update on the, both the capital plan and the budget do document. What stage? Of development are they in and when are they going to be published okay frank you want to you want to cover that now or sure um as you know we receive grants for both the budget model modeling and the capital mm -hmm. uh, planning process i did meet with interestingly enough the collins center uh lisa and i did that i spoke with them uh, at a capital conference on friday they have a proposal, uh, and there's also a proposal from another group. We've met with one, we want to meet with the other, and we're going to engage them. They're telling us it's a two to three month process to develop that model and plan. Uh, I know, Sean, you're probably looking for something a, a lot sooner, but we'll work as we have on the capital process until we have the plan in place. Um, I obviously need to meet with the finance committee, uh, which hopefully I'll be doing after our meeting. Okay. So is that process going to run parallel to the current process? Yes. Or, so the current bylaw says that there will be a capital plan that should be proposed roughly by January 1st, isn't that right? That is, but obviously if we're seeking a build a plan, uh, I can present a budget outline or a capital outline by January 1st, but it's not going to be meaningful in the context of what we're seeking to develop. But it would give some guidance to yes. what we're going to be doing in May, yes. given the time frame of this, this other project. Correct. So the first meeting in January, we could have some sort of an outline? I will. Okay. With the budget document specifically, um, I know Having a professional budget document is excellent, but something for the public to to analyze as this process continues would be extremely helpful. Um, Sean, I'd like to do that, but as it stands right now, we don't even have a general budget outline. All we have are departments projecting what would happen if the budget is cut 3% and if the budget is cut 6%. And I stated in our last meeting that I don't think that's the approach we should be taking. We should be building parallel budgets one with cuts and one that will identify what we need to seek in additional funding for that to work. But we don't have the information we need to do that right now because that's not the instruction that was given to the departments in working with the finance committee. I think one of the, just one of the um, I guess, downfalls you run into, though, is with other departments that have a budget document or with other towns that have a budget document, you can at least refer back to like the historical, how things came to be this way, general information about how, you know, what is free cash, the 
the nuts and bolts of the budget itself, not necessarily the, you know, up-to-date numbers. You know, so the, the two really are helpful. So the fact that we don't have a budget document from last year kind of hurts us, I guess, what I'm saying. We do. We have Article 2. Article 2 definitely is helpful for people that know what they're looking at. But, again, um, say if you can compare Article 2 with the school's budget document. The school budget document is pretty comprehensive. It breaks it down into categories that are easily easy to digest with graphs and charts, and it gives, like, kind of a, how things came to be this way. Um, so that kind of information could be helpful, even if it's just uh, supplementary information, I think would be appreciated. So well, it, more I, for a, 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 a financial statement, a snapshot, sure. more so than you're looking for a budget yeah. document. You're, you're saying, you know, a state of, of where we're at and, you know, where our, um, uh, you know, what, what's owed, what's, what we have out there in the books for debt, is that what you're talking sure. about? Sure, I mean, or? just a general communication tool that is an educational tool, something. forum for the public. You know, yeah. I think that could be helpful. I know where this will come. I, I do too, and it's going to take time to build yeah, that. I mean, it's, it's we don't do it now. It's not some. It's something that we have to go back and reconstruct, and I am willing to do that. Uh, but I take exception to the issue that people aren't provided with information. Article two, when it's presented, breaks down all of the expenditures by department and by division: general government, public safety, uh, public works. Uh, classified expenses, unclassified expenses. It goes through a good job of spelling out what's done in the enterprise account, both in sewer and water, and also the revenues and all the expenditures. Uh, what you're saying is you prefer a different format with more history. And I don't have a problem with that, but I'm working on everything right now and I can't do it all at once. Sure, and I, I And it's not like we that. have a financial person here besides me to do that. No, but... Um, I think as we kind of turn back time a little bit and we knew that this process was going to kind of come to a head and people have some major decisions to make, more knowledge is better. So if we can get some good knowledge out to people before they make a, you know, some difficult choices, that would be helpful. Well, I, I don't think there was a lack of information to the public. We've talked every year about the cost of the budget rising, the percentages uh, that we carry. Uh, notably, the increases in the school budget, which far outpace our revenue. Uh, you know, I appreciate your references to Hanover, but we don't have revenue producing projects like they do. Our limitation is what we can build downtown. We have lots of housing being developed, and that will generate revenue, but it's also going to increase expenses. Uh, I think what you have to recognize, and, and maybe people aren't willing to do this, but we're not a Hanover, and we're never going to be a Hanover, because we don't have the ability to bring that structure into the town of Whitman. I, I definitely, I, I understand that argument, but I think the reason why Hanover wins awards for both their website and for their budget isn't because they make a, a little bit more commercial um, you know, they make more commercial tax money than we do. It's because of the way that they organize their budget document and the way that they organize their website because they, they, were, they made transparency a goal and they followed through with that goal and then they, they are more transparent through but those things. And they have more people working on it too. Staff that they, you know, it, it is, I know exactly what you're looking at and I've seen it, Dedham has a, a fabulous newsletter that they put out that has all that information too. Sure. But they have the staff and the capabilities to do it. And one thing that, um, you know, we are pretty shy on in town hall here. And, it, you know, it's very expensive to have that kind of staff and that much staff. But, um, you know, it is something that would be great to put it together. And once it's done once, and we just you can backfill it. But it is, um, it is difficult to get to stuff like that, for sure. Well, anything you do would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Okay, thank you, Sean. Did you want to say something? Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, it's time to act on the application of Eat With Us Incorporated, doing business as South China Gourmet.
Jason J. Tan for a common vitalist license on the premises located at 187 South Avenue, subject to receipt of the proof of workers' compensation insurance and final approval of the Board of Health. Need a motion, so moved. Is there, is there a motion? So second. moved. Is there a second? Second. This is just a change in name, sir? No, it's change in ownership. In ownership, too, yes. Is Mr. Tan here? No. Um, Laurie, how's the paperwork and everything? Anyone have any thoughts? Ready to vote? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Public meeting in respect to the application of Memorial Field Association Incorporated to a business as American Legion Post 22 for a change in officers, directors, in connection with the All Alcohol Club license on the premises located at 33 Legion Parkway. So moved. Second. Zero second. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, yeah, Laura, they all caught up with their paperwork because I remember one time there was back yeah. like all set. Not the Legion. Uh, not the Legion. <laughs> okay, my, then my, might have been the other one, yeah? Yeah, okay. <laughs> any, any, anything else helpful? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> yep. Sorry. <laughs> Just a couple of things under the chairman's report. I received an invitation to a to school committee meeting on next Wednesday, the 12th of December, 7 o'clock, uh, to discuss their budget or to go over budget items. Uh, did the rest of you receive copies of that? I, it didn't look to me like you received copies, but if you didn't, I'd encourage you to attend as well, uh, 7 o'clock next Wednesday night. Uh, and just by way of announcement, at, at the current time, there is a, uh, a local commuter, a community meeting, an evening meeting of the uh, Whitman Hanson will going on, um, on right now, and um, next next meeting we'll get a report on that. This is this tomorrow or the following one? What? Uh, it's the meeting. The twelfth. Twelfth of December. Twelfth, twelfth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not tomorrow, school. but the following. I, mean, following I have my school committee. Yeah. We also have received, we received proposals um, for the Chief of Police and Deputy Chief of Police Assessment Centers. We received three proposals. Yep. And you have copies of them. I'd be, I think it would be appropriate to have, my feeling is it would be appropriate to have the procurement officer, Lisa, uh, go over the proposals and make a, re make a recommendation to us and then we could vote on it. And the alternative would be we would have the, the three companies come in and we'd interview them and, and then vote on it, um, wh whatever is the board's pleasure. I have a question. Do we have to take the lowest bid? It's, oh, wait a minute, it's under 10000 If it's an IFP, you have to take the lowest responsible bid. Right. If it's a RFQ, then you take the qualifications. But I believe this was as an invitation for bid. It's just a quote, wasn't it? Yeah, it's quotes. You just asked for a written quote, right. Lisa? Well, Scott actually did, oh, okay. did the uh, did you, requests. I mean, it's under $10,000, so you, you would best practices. Yeah. But best practices, if you feel that. If they're all pre responsive. If they're responsive. all relative, then you can select the one that you feel best hmm. present. Best I, I think we'd leave it up to Lisa. I agree. Yeah. I don't know why we'd want to do that. Anything other okay. than that. <laughs> okay, and then we'll refer to Lisa at the next, at first meeting in January. Perhaps you could come up with, we could recommend one of them and then we'll, we'll vote. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, sir. Town Administrator support budget progress. Well. Do you have anything more to add? <laughs> I, the, the, I think we kind of covered that, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, I do understand uh, what Sean is getting at in terms of presentation. There are a lot of different ways to present information. And one of the uh, formats that, that I particularly uh, am interested in adopting is one that Brookline uses that was presented at the Capitol uh, conference that I attended Friday in, uh, what is that? The State Fire Academy in Stowe, uh, particularly because it's not only capital driven. 
It's a, it's a complete budget snapshot. It identifies the revenues and expenditures, where they come from, and what the anticipated needs are going, going forward. I'm working on a 14 to 19 model right now that will give us some comparative mm -hmm. information to work with. And I'm actually going to assign the uh, separating out the information to the accountant since he needs to get more familiar with the... Can I say something about the accountant? Yeah. Hey, Frank, I know um, when the Finance Committee, when a department presents their budget to the Finance Committee, as Sean would know, Randy and myself, um, they're given the reasons why each department comes up with a certain number. And then that certain number, if it's agreed upon by the Finance Committee and the department head and it's presented at town meeting, that one number is put on Article 2. If we were to put, we'll say, either police, fire, DP, whatever, any department, if we were to put the reasons why they want a certain figure, uh, that budget book would be this thick. I mean, for a budget report. There are, there are some things that I hope will be put together early enough to publish well in advance of town meeting, explaining the how numbers are arrived. Department yeah. numbers. Yeah. But again, you know, we're, we're going through a process right now that still has to end up creating a budget. Right. And it actually, in my mind, has to create two budgets because we have to be prepared to identify what our needs are and why we're asking the community to support those needs. If they're not supported, we have to be prepared to work with a different budget. I never want to do what we did a couple of years ago when we had two articles, two no. on the floor. Um, but <laughs> it, was, it, it took us months to resolve that in, in our filing with the state, but but people need to know that if the budget we're requesting isn't approved, we'll be returning to work on this budget. It would be a two meeting process, in my mind. But we still have to work that out. I mean, because you get the school budget book if whoever goes in at the meeting, <laughs> it's this thick of the school budget. I mean, if we were to do that for the town, I mean, it would be a huge. It would be large smaller. Document. I mean, they're a $50 million budget. Yeah. You know? And, they, and they, they present all of that so that people have an opportunity to review it and develop questions and analyze right. it. Right. And, and, and basically, we do the same thing through the Finance Committee and us. We, we go over those and discuss the budgets and yourself and, and uh, Lisa and come up with the best number that would suit the town and present that at town meeting. Yeah, I, I don't think we'll be seeing that this year. I think we'll be seeing a budget, and, and I'm, it's opinion. We haven't right. developed it yet. Right. But my opinion is we're going to develop a budget that's sound for the town and the schools, and we're going to present the arguments why that budget is needed, and it will be tied to an override because there's no way the levy can support it. We also have to be prepared at that point, if the answer is no, what we're going to do to work with a smaller budget. Any any questions? Or anything else? Well, I think just to segue into that, um, since I think because you're next, um, uh, up anyways. Um, I guess a, a question that I have because I know um, you just said earlier that you you feel as though we're probably going about it the wrong way by not putting the budget together. So have we given any direction to go the other way so we can just... Well, the finance committee is on that path. We, I think we need... Uh, to just put the budget together. To put a budget together. And I think we have to do it with key stakeholders. Um, and certainly... You know, you're you're on that project. I'm on that project. And so I guess, uh, and and since they're meeting on the 12th, I mean, we probably want to schedule our next meeting right after that. Right. Um, so I don't know the 17th, 18th, if we if we can put it out there to meet with that group, we'll have all the information up there. 
Um, I think that might be good. No. Um, that you got the document back to everybody. I don't know if you got anything right. back from anybody. No, but the, the, the work, that work process is relatively simple and it's straightforward. It has to be translated now into documentation and, and effort. Um, I, I, uh, I don't want to repeat myself, but we have to have our history, we have to have what's needed, and we also have to be prepared to identify what we can live without. Do you think we'll be able to meet 17th or 18th? We'll have enough information by then, right? Yeah. Good. So we're going to meet. Is that your update? Yeah, just that we get a, we're waiting after the 12th. We'll have their numbers and we can all well, get back together. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure we're going to have their numbers as a result of that meeting. Um, no, I don't think we will. That's why. I, be, the, that's letter, why I the letter is an way. invitation on behalf of the Whitman Hanson Regional School Committee. Um, to attend its upcoming district school committee meeting on Wednesday, December 12th, for an essential budget discussion. We welcome any guidance that can be given to the school committee um, as, as the school committee works to determine a March assessment figure to present to the, to the May 2019 town meeting. So it's an essential budget discussion. They're, they're looking towards a March deadline to come yeah. up with an assessment figure. Just my apologies. When you said the 12th, I thought we were talking about the January meeting with the Finance Committee. No, th this is an, an Yeah, and we're now we're talking yeah, about we were talk. Talk. We were going to get some information yeah. from the school committee. No, I think they're continuing their discussion, okay. and they'd like some input from us probably, which but we've given them some. Yeah. <laughs> I think first thing is we need to diagnose the actual shortfall, which est estimating the school number, obviously. Which right. is why I think we need to put right. that first budget together. Right. So until we have until we have real numbers. And our real number from them, apparently, they're looking at a March deadline for themselves right. to give us their figure. But you've received You've received tentative figures, haven't you? What we've received is budgets with three and six percent reductions. We haven't received a budget from the school from the schools. No, I've received, received no budget from the schools. Okay, you've no idea what. They're well, asking. the last conversation I had with Christine was a month and a half ago. Right. And at that point, they said they were looking at a four to five percent budget increase to to, a, to 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 uh, furnish a level services budget. Right, and that four to five translates into ten to fourteen percent in our assessment, yeah. unless the state suddenly increases the flow of Chapter 70 money. I mean, last year we got 100000 That was a rounding error on that budget. Is it becoming a lot clearer, Sean? No. <laughs> Clear as mine. You know, yeah. You know that, uh, well, Randy's not the Transparency, answer. it means different He's things in different situations I think I, I can recall when I, when I was on the school committee uh, when it was a K through 8 committee and we <laughs> had to present to the town our budget at town meeting in the same kind of detail that the police department did fire department does right every other town department and the town got to vote on every single item in the school committee's budget at that meeting true and that was a terrible experience most of the time that's when we had two uh, night meetings, three and night there meetings. And there, there, there were times when the, the, the town meeting was able to be talked into um, uh, foregoing the finance committee's recommendation, um, which was usually ridiculous. But that, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a terrible time. When, when the schools decided to regionalize, one of the values to the K-8 school committee of regionalization was that it no longer had to do that. What it had to do was what the region did. The four that nine to twelve did, and which now K to twelve does, and that's present an assessment figure once a year to the to the towns, to each of the towns, and the town votes it up or down. A uh, lot simpler for a school committee to present you all with an assess us all with an assessment figure, and expect us to vote it up or down. Um, I don't, I don't get the same. Even though I read the the school's budget book, I don't, I don't get the same feeling of knowing exactly where money's coming from and, and what's happening to it and what goes on as I, as I did before. But 
I don't, and I'm not saying let's go back to the good old days because those days weren't that much fun. <clears throat> yeah, Cobb, I think that's what we have our, our, our elected school committee officials you have to look at but before it's presented to the town to get the best number for the towns. Both that's towns. right. That's right. Yeah. There's, a, there's an element of trust there. Yeah. And I, uh, I tend to trust them. Anyway. But this year isn't going to be any fun. I was um, approached by a school committee member uh, Sunday wanting to know what the attitude was about the schools and all we're looking for is a level funded budget, a level service budget, uh, which is a reasonable request, keep the services the same. But then if you think of every other department, if you think of the, the fire department, you think of the police department, you think of the town clerk's office, you think of the library, you think of the council on aging, they would love to have a level service budget next year too. But they're being, to but they're all being told to, you know, anticipate maybe a 3% or a 6% cut in your budget. So it's not it, it, it's not an enjoyable year to, to have. Um, hopefully, if some of the, the, the things that we have in progress now uh, eventually come to fruition, next year will be a, a year that has a different feel to it. Not because our situation is any better, because we're still Whitman. Um, and we have we have our limitations as, 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 as a town as far as uh, raising funds. Um, not that it, that will be any better, but perhaps everyone will have a clear understanding of what we need and where we come from. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, you know, all the work that everybody does, the Finance Committee, at this board, all the, the uh, department heads and everything that they do and work to put this together ultimately doesn't mean much when it comes to the final say. The final say is the citizens. Right, but, but that, that goes to Sean's point. Sean's point is, he, I, I think what I hear Sean saying, and I hope that's what I hear him saying, is that um, when he's talking about transparency in a budget document, he's talking about making the citizens, allowing the citizens to be as educated as they can about the whole, the whole thing. Right. Prior yeah. to town meeting. That's one, that's one way of dealing with it. Yeah. Prior yeah. to town meeting, right. At a town meeting, we, you can't be any more transparent than we are at town meeting. They have right. all those, as Frank says, they have all those figures. Um, you know, it, it's just dawned on me, there's, there's another way to do it, which is as messy, uh, and that is to have uh, like a pre-town meeting. I thought where, about that. Where, where the people that are responsible invite the, the town to come to a meeting to have explained to them <coughs> where, why we are where we are and what we need to do and, and all of that. Um, and options that we have. Yeah. And, so, and they could, so, so there can be an edu educational system in place before town right. meeting. So when town meeting comes, people are making thoughtful choices. And that would and be at, at that point, the, in March. the deficit would be, would be, hopefully. Right. And this is is a two-pronged approach because uh, while we do all this work and uh, come up with this hand wringing and figuring this out and and putting all bells and whistles on websites and, and, and documents and everything else. And it's up to them to vote at either town meeting or at the ballot box. And they're gonna decide what kind of town this is, not us. We have to keep that in mind, that we are purveyors of information. They decide what dollars get spent and where they get spent. And sometimes we forget that as, as a whole in administration. We need to remember that, because it's their money. And you know, <coughs> We're going to get a clue once the next item on the agenda is the community assessment. We're going to get kind of a clue um, what this town wants when we look at that. <coughs> That's actually it's kind of a scary thing to think about because some of us, a lot of us, come to these meetings with um, preconceived notions right. about what we'd like the town right. to be or what the town what the town itself wants to be. Right. Um, Frank, if you'd like to give an update on the assessment, we've had some. From uh, from what the, the people at Bridgewater State say, some impressive responses, or a number of responses is impressive at this yeah. stage. We, uh, as of today, uh, we have 576 online responses. We have uh, 150 or more paper surveys. They're waiting to be input, so that's 726. Uh, I suspect we're going to see more is I got my survey in the mail on Monday, hmm. as did my son. Uh, so there was a large group, right. and apparently they were divided up over time. 
So we hopefully will have maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred, somewhere in that range. Fifteen hundred would be great. That's a sixth of the voting community. Well, it's not like a hundred people come, a hundred and fifty people coming to a town meeting. Right. Yeah. And did you, what was the percentage that she said is on average <coughs> the, the response rate? Do you remember? It, there were a couple of numbers she said. One was the, the we have already surpassed in percentage the um, uh, town on Route 9 that she was talking about, Millbury. Yeah. We've already surpassed percentage wise the Millbury response. And they were pretty happy with that. So I, you know, at this point, it's more than just a numbers game. It's going to be input. And it's, going to, it's going to be interesting right. to see what those responses are. On the, I, disclosure, I probably go on Facebook three times a month. And that's usually because I get an email that my daughter-in-law has posted some pictures. And as soon as you go on, you get blitzed with all the other stuff there. And I did see some comments uh, about, uh, at least in a couple of people's opinion, that the survey was designed um, to reflect our need to increase revenue. And I don't think that was the case at all. I think it was a very objective, structured, uh, survey that really asks what people think. Not that we've made any secret of the fact that we do need to find a way to increase revenue. <laughs> well, and, so. and one of two of the questions <laughs> relate to priorities. Where do you want, you know, where would your funds go? Where would you fund more? Where would you fund less? I'm, I know it would be interesting to see how they come back. But it's it's going to help us to plan for the long-term future. And I would say if you could possibly send out something else on Facebook for the town site, just so people don't think it's closed. Because right. I actually did last week. Heavy oh, for a while. You saw point. it quite a bit, but I haven't <coughs> seen any recently. When is the deadline? We don't have a hard deadline. No, she she has a class that finishes we this talk, semester. That we talked mid-November for responses, so must be up, right? uh, but certainly they didn't even get out until then. So we're probably looking at mid to late December. That's a good that's a good suggestion, man. If we can get out a reminder. Yeah. Chief Greno, you're up. Should have all received a copy of the report. Yes. Do you want me to go through it? Do you have any questions? Or you know, that's a good point. Anyone have any questions of the chief? No. Anything you want to highlight? Since you have the, you know, you have the, the podium, um, and you have a captive audience. Um, I, 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 I apologize. I haven't been able to look at the cost justification study yet. I just haven't had okay. a chance to go through it all. I just picked it up. But it's, um, it's, it's, it's a document that we need. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. this year we need it. So I guess for some highlights, just to go through things, um, as of November 27th of this report, we'd responded to 2,249 emergency calls. Um, that shows that um, the percentage breakdown of that is 58.7% is EMS and 41.3% are fire. I think that's very important to note. Um, back in the 60s, we were all fire. When we took over the ambulance in 73, it kind of went still fire. In the 80s, it went EMS. 1990s, it stayed like kind of that way, but now in the 2000s, we're kind of leveling out. So um, I, 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 I think if you look at the um, call volume that we've been doing over the past 10 to 15 years, you'll see that um, those numbers are coming closer to closer. And those numbers justify what we're doing every day. It's just not EMS work, but it's fire work. And, and that, that, that type of call volume demands the level of service that we currently 
provide like with the shift staffing that we have, if not more. So could you, could you we, we added some people last year. Can you remind me when the last time the fire department actually added people? We didn't. We went full time. We went full time. Oops. In 1965, the town voted to that add was the number I remember five was, members. The number I remember was 65. In 1965, the town voted to staff the fire department with five firefighters. In 1973, and you'll see in that report, in 1973, the, the town took on a fire-based ambulance service with no additional staffing. So, um, and it wasn't until 2016 that we added three to four so, more people. So if, if people were under the could be under the misapprehension that the fire department just added people and we're talking and you know and, and the town is, is considering um, a tough budget year mm -hmm. what they have to remember is that 1965 was the last time that the fire service was increased by correct by any That's numbers correct. of people With 1960 over, 1965 mm -hmm. With over 200 percent increase in call volume and taking on. I just wanted to give you the opportunity to say that. 1965. Yeah, okay. 1965 was when we started with five people. We now have six. With five per shift, let's clarify. Five, five per shift. Six people shift. may not understand yes. that. True. Five per shift. Um, other than that, you know, one of the big things that that um, we that we have uh, been experiencing is is is, is very sick patients. I don't know if it's because of today's modern health care that's out there that people can't afford or that they don't want to make the co-pays or whatever, but what we're seeing is people aren't basically going to their primary care physicians or they're waiting until the 11th hour or even the 12th hour before they call 911 for help. And that's leading to very, very sick patients, who, which, is quite, which is requiring more extensive manpower in the back of the ambulance to work these patients up and stabilize them. Um, and um, if you took note at the end of the report, you'll see that the second ambulance that we staff um, is, is actually seeing a significant amount of critical patients. And without staffing of that second ambulance, these patients would have had to wait in excess of 10 to 15 minutes for an outside ambulance, and it would have been fatal for them. So it's more than just the, um, the, the levels of service the pendulum. waiting. Yeah. It's more than just there being like almost 50-50. It's that the people that you are seeing with the um, the ambulance services are more seriously, Correct. more seriously ill, and that is a reflection of the economy, just the times, the, the times, the age of the town. There's whatever. no rhyme or reason as to why. Okay. Yeah. Not that we can see anywhere, and it ranges everywhere from respiratory to cardiac. To, uh, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. It's a whole slew of different things. On a good note. Um, if you look at the opioid crisis that we were experiencing, I don't have the numbers exactly in front of me, um, but I believe last year at this time we were at 40 something, 49 opioid overdoses, and this year we're in the area of 29. 29? 29, I believe, is what the count was. Like I said, it, the numbers are in here somewhere. That's overdose deaths. No, that's just overdoses. That's just overdoses. That's just overdoses. Oh, wow. Op opioid overdoses. And I, would, and I would defer that off um, probably because of the use of Narcan. Yeah. Narcan is more readily available to everybody. Street corners, homes. Um, so I'm sure that there's a lot going on out there that we're not seeing, um, right. which is okay. You know, they're around like being they're around being taken care of at home. Um, you know, it's just like people need to realize the fact that Narcan is quick acting and short acting, um, and with the doses of heroin and the mixtures that we're seeing in the heroin in the <coughs> streets, sometimes. More often than not, that single dose of Narcan is not doing the job. Um, so the overdoses that we are seeing are very significant. Okay. And just, um, you know, grants have been great this year. We received um, some very good grants. We received the uh, SAFE grant, which we get most every year for, for uh, around $6,500, which puts the firefighters out in schools during fire prevention week with fire safe education. We received um, just um, just a little bit more than a $230,000 grant, which we placed all of our SCBA, which went in service last week. Um, that that um, was a huge grant. I've uh, recently applied, applied, applied for, for a $35,000 grant to replace the generator system at the fire station. That generator is 21 years old. It's becoming less and less reliable. Um, so the state has a hazardous mitigation grant program that um, 
allows for like mini grants like this. So um, in discussions with um, Lisa when she has done her grants, the um, grant package it took for for $35,000, it took probably three weeks to fill out. Um, it's just that complicated to fill these grants out now. So, other than that, um, things are going well. Um, the budget looks good right now. Do you want me to, to speak about my impact statement to the finance committee on what they requested? Should sh should 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 a budget number be put forth other than what my my requested number is? That would be appropriate. Yeah. So. The Finance Committee, as you know, came forward and asked for a negative three and negative six percent reduction in all budgets. Um, I replied back to the Finance Committee um, very politely, um, or um, where I specifically asked them for numbers. What number are they predicting that they want to fund? And I will give them an impact statement on what those numbers are. Um, we're, at, we're at a budget right now that has taken us 10 years to get to where we are. Um, with six members per shift, shift staffing is what it's all about. Maintaining six on um, my people a shift um, gives this, this, this on my community the, the service that they demand. Um, between the fire runs and, e, and uh, like EMS runs, um, and you'll see in my report that, that, that the shift strength gives them what they want. Anything less than what I have requested for fiscal 20's level <coughs> Well, not level budget, but um, with the contractual um, like obligations and stuff, um, is a detriment to the fire service and to the public safety and Whitman. As you know, fiscal 20 um, starts year three of the collective bargaining agreement. Part of that collective bargaining agreement is to put the deputy fire chief on days. He's uh, worked a shift for the past since 1965. Since been here. Yeah, since 1965. Um, there has never been been a um, administrative second in command of the fire department. This year's this this current contract that was f um, negotiated in good faith um, brought that topic back to light. This is a topic that my predecessor fought for, and and that I have uh, discussed for uh, like many years. Um, with the three percent reduction to a number of um, Three thousand, uh, three million seven hundred thirty-seven thousand eight hundred ninety-five. Um, that would eliminate that position. Um, so what that would basically do is keep that position on shift and not fill that position. Um, when you move into the six percent, the uh, six percent um, brings us down to three point six two 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 nine zero. Um, in addition to removing the deputy from that position. It also does a whole slew of things. And what it does is it rolls the fire department back 10 years from where we are today for services to this community. Um, it, for, for small stuff, it just eliminates anything that we do in the community. No community details, the, the touch of trucks, the banners, all small money stuff, but it, it, it just gets rid of all that. So um, there is no community details or events. It, it, it takes the IT stipend position, which is funded, um, which that, which that uh, my position is responsible for all of our mandated reporting software that we have to report off to other state. In addition to that position, that, that builds the database for our CAD system, our computer um, um, dispatch system, which puts all of the critical information out to our members in the field as to what they're walking into and where they're going. Um, it wipes that funding out for that position. It also eliminates the funding source for our light, main, our light maintenance technician. These are positions that were successfully <laughs> bargained because of repair work at the fire station. We have minor maintenance issues on fire apparatus. That's what this person takes care of. Um, without this person, that that time, like, we'll increase our maintenance budget line by several thousand dollars. Um, because instead of my guy, like, coming in and working on overtime for eight hours and fixing um, door hinges and light bulbs and broken seats and broken air packs and stuff, it's all going to get shipped out at $260, $300 an hour. So, um, so that, that time, like, eliminates that. It's going to eliminate storm coverage. So as you know that when we have a significant snowstorm or type of, of uh, like weather event, we upstaff for those. 
because we see a dramatic increase in call volume like during those storms. Wires down, trees on houses, trees across roads, stuff like that. We budget approximately thirty to forty thousand dollars in the budget for specific storm coverages. There will be no storm coverages. We will simply run a six person shift, prioritize the calls, stack the calls, and when we get there, we get there. Um, it will eliminate the call department. It's not a big number, there's only two members, but it will eliminate the Anomaly call department. It's going to reduce the training officer hours from eight hours um, down to eight hours per month, which is a detrimental effect on firefighter training. You know, our guys have, have to be the best that they can be as soon as that phone rings and that bell goes off. And they, and they do that by training. And the training officer um, has to maintain those records and, and put the lesson plans together and train these people. With OSHA guidelines effective on February 1st of 2019, um, you, you can't lax on firefighter training. It has to be done quarterly. It has to be documented. So I don't know where that that dynamic would leave us. Um, it's going to reduce our, e, uh, our, e, our EMS officer um, down to 20 hours per month. Right now, um, this position is such a critical and important position that it was my plans for the past couple of years, and I've had discussions about this, that when the fire station, police station, town hall, 2000 debt was paid off. That frees up $100,000 in the ambulance revenue account on fiscal 20. I was going to propose that we um, negotiate to place an EMS officer on days to handle EMS services in the town. We have a fire training officer, we have a fire prevention officer, which is the deputy. We do 58% on like EMS. It's only proper that we have a full-time EMS person. Right now, he works, um, I believe it's 10 hours a week, uh, or, or, or like 15 hours a week. And, and, and what that person is responsible for is all of the QA, QI of every single incident that we do in regards to EMS. So all the quality assurance and all of the quality improvement of every single EMS run that we go to, he has to have his hands on. He is responsible for the, the um, the uh, like ambulance equipment, the medication logs, the members' training, their certifications, right down the line. Um, that will um, knock him down to about five hours a week, and it will um, threaten our certification, quite frankly, um, as our um, like ambulance like um, licensing, because there's just not enough hours in the day now for him to do what what for him to do what is required to be done. Um, by reducing his hours, it's going to jeopardize our EMS service. Um, and then, finally, it's going to reduce callback and overtime, um, which will leave insufficient coverage for second calls, and at times no coverage at all for in the town. So what happens right now is, is we run six people a shift, obviously. First ambulance goes out the door, three people go out the door with it, two on the ambulance and the shift commander. Second call comes in for a car fire. The engine goes out the door with three people on it. We would then page in overtime, which is a group callback, to bring in an off-duty group to cover the station until that apparatus clears up. They have to be what we call committed for greater than 10 minutes before they, they like punch in a group on overtime. We would no longer be paging in that group. So we historically get two, three, four calls at a time. Um, we would eliminate group callback. So there would be no callback. So if the first call was for a... Uh, Car fire, you'd have two people left in the firehouse to take care of that second that second call, like if it's an ambulance call. And with the level of sick patients that time like we're seeing, you're gonna have two people at, at some point with somebody having a major heart attack or a stroke or something. So um, basically what it does is, is, is it brings us back to 2008 um, levels. With OSHA regulations stepping in on February 1st of, uh, of, uh, of uh, like 2019, there's a lot to that. There's, there's so much to that that this Commonwealth has no idea what they're walking into. The Fire Chiefs of Mass and the PFFM have uh, been working with the uh, Department of Unlike Labor Standards since it came out, um, trying to get our arms wrapped around it with the elimination of the Deputy Chief. Um, he was gonna be the OSHA guy. We need all new policies and procedures. We need all new standing operating procedures. You know, we need $300,000 just to make our building OSHA compliant. Not even talking about what the DPW is going to need. <laughs> so, you know, we've got a lot of problems 
facing us like down the road. And that's my uh, great news. <laughs> That's your report. Thank you, Chief. Anyone have any questions or comments? I have two. Yes, Dan. One, uh, Chief, when you do a callback <laughs> and they you know, to fill it when you dump the station, you do a callback. Yep. And then an ambulance comes back. That person you call back, how long does he stay at the station? They're a two hour callback, and generally our calls are taking somewhere around 90 minutes. All right. So, so. If, if, if it's two hours, he gets paid, he stays at basically almost the two hours. More often than not, probably. I mean, if you're getting paid like there are times that um, like there's a call back and they come in and you know like we'll have a call for a house fire and they'll go down and that'll be an all call which brings everybody in and it turns out to be be yeah, like an oil burner issue and they're there for 20 minutes. Yeah. But when this but when both ambulances are out the door or the truck is at a car fire and the ambulance like goes out the door, the ambulance is gone for 90 minutes. So you know like by the time that they they like clean up and get back, most people are there for. for for, for, for an hour and a half, Okay. like generally. And my other question was, I know a few years ago we increased the, uh, the fees, the ambulance yep. fees, because we are, we are at the bottom. Yep. Now we're in the middle, we're not at the top, we're not at the bottom, we're in the middle. Have you considered maybe looking at that again? Not really, um, only because you know, we're pretty much at, at the state average of uh, Medicare 200, I think we're at right now. Um, you can bill what you want, yeah. but you're only going to bring in as much as they're going right. to pay. And Mass Health is, if no matter how many Mass Health patients that you transport, no matter how much that you bill them, Mass Health is going to pay you their set rate of I think it's two hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah. And we haven't. Remember how we used to used to come before us and ask if we could um, get rid of our. If you send out a number of bills, yeah. and they were never being paid, so we would dismiss yep. them. We haven't done that in a while. So does that is that a good thing, or are um, you just being able to? Do our it? collection ratio was up. We reconcile each each uh, month with the accountant's office, and in our rec in our we're about a ninety percent like collection right now. So that's good. So yeah. things are good. As of this morning, um, the reserve for appropriation account has five hundred forty eight thousand two hundred eighty seven dollars in it. Now we carried over one hundred and I, I want to say one hundred twenty thousand dollars, but we're on pace right now to hit nine hundred thousand dollars in that account. That's good. So yeah. thank you, Chief. Okay, thank you. I, I, just, quick, no, sure. I, I just wanted to mention the document briefly, um, and as gentlemen here go through it, I, I think this is the kind of document that probably Sean wants to see. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's just uh, one department. Right, and as the chief was speaking, I'm thinking to myself, if this had a fixed asset list and a little bit in your Article 2 numbers on that, then our fire department's complete. Yeah. The taxpayer is going to be able to make it educated decision based off this. And I, I think going forward, this may be the lines of something to direct every department head to produce a document similar to this. And, and I think with that, then the budget document falls into place yeah. almost so a little naturally. Yeah, we're thinking right. I was thinking the exact same thing. I, I agree with you. Uh, this is fantastic. Um, I don't think I've ever had this kind of information before. I mean, this is really comprehensive, and uh, if this doesn't <coughs> open your eyes to the pickle we're in, uh, that presentation needs to be at our pre-town meeting that we most definitely should have, an informational night to get everybody on the same page. <coughs> the presentation you gave tonight, the dire consequences that we are, are facing, and this information here can set the record straight, and I, I commend you on the report. It's a great job. Thank you. You know, it's, that's always been a topic. Firebase versus private, it's been a topic. Yeah. It, um, it was a topic in the 1980s around here, it was in the yeah. 90s, it, it just keeps all resurfacing. So my goal with that was to put it to bed. You know, Dr. Krawski, like you said it right, 1965, five people. We brought the ambulance on in 1973, we didn't add anybody. It doesn't cost this town much of anything to run a fire-based ambulance because you have to have the people there anyways. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Sean, do you have a copy of uh, his yeah, yeah, Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> Policies and procedures, Frank, anything under that category? Uh, yeah, we have, that as uh, Scott mentioned earlier, we put together an outline of what we want 
these things to be. I'll be <laughs> probably presenting that as a uh, policy document in uh, January. What as a policy document? The Our budget policy. The budget. Oh, okay. The right. budget process. Okay. Um, we'll also be bringing back uh, uh, some policy information related to benefits and vacation to standardize uh, okay, yeah. good. And we probably have what to, we're doing. Do we have updates to do on our personnel plan now also related to some of the OSHA reg regulations? Likely. Yeah, probably have to refer to them in there. Yeah. Well, that'd be fun. Can we, can we put this online? Yes. Can we sure. have Josh make this available to everybody? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can uh, put it right on the uh, fire information site. And maybe um, there's um, nothing here that on, on our next it. month's or our next meeting, if you want to make if possibly a agenda item to discuss this idea of a pre-town meeting town meeting sure um, because I think there's probably some other ideas that we can go along with it that maybe we can have Josh McNeil here uh, to discuss other ways of getting our All right. All right, ideas yeah. out yeah. to everybody as well as that um, it's a very interesting concept and your group can be talking about it too I think so okay. yeah absolutely but New business, uh, renew the following licenses for calendar year 2019, subject to payment of license fee, no outstanding tax issues, submittal of all required renewal documents and the approvals were required of the building and fire departments. And we have a bunch of categories here. I'm not gonna read all of the names. I'll read the categories. The all alcohol, all alcohol club liquor licenses, the all alcohol package good store liquor licenses, amusement live entertainment licenses, automatic amusement device licenses, Class one auto dealers licenses, class two auto dealers licenses, common vittlers licenses, common vittlers all alcohol liquor licenses, common vittlers wine and malt liquor licenses, congregate housing licenses, farmer series pouring permits, general on-premise wine and malt licenses, public entertainment on Sunday licenses, rooming house licenses, and wine and malt package goods store liquor licenses. <laughs> so moved. Second. Someone moving all of those? Yes. All just of okay. you just noting that. Did anyone have any, discu any discussion of that? Just any? noting that all of this was on the published agenda for everybody to review prior to our meeting, and it's out there now. All those names that I didn't name. All the, yes. all the individual licenses. Yes. And there's no exceptions, none of them. Mm -hmm. being held yeah. Yeah. In that case, and a motion to accept all of to uh, renew all of them. I made that motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Took a lot less time than needed to. Um, consider extending the closing time for Club and Common Vittler liquor license holders to 2 a.m. on Tuesday, January 1st for New Year's Eve celebrations. So moved. This is yearly. Sir, second. Second. Yeah. Any discussion on that? Yearly. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Intermunicipal Agreement Fire Dispatch Services. Frank? Um, yeah, we currently have an agreement uh, with Holbrook to provide uh, two things 911 uh, PSAP primary answering point and fire answering and um, that's the word I'm looking for, Tim. Dispatch. Dispatching. Uh, they have. We, we've had this for a couple of years. Uh, Holbrook is moving into or moving toward a, a uh, major update to their systems. And as a result of that, they were asking us to provide more support. So, uh, financial support. Financial support. Yeah. What other type is there? Howdy, <laughs> well done. Go for it, guys. So the, uh, I was a little taken aback by the. We all were. Uh, the first proposal. It's like 20 percent, right? By 20. It was 25 at one point, but but uh, Tim did go back to Holbrook uh, to have a discussion on it, 
And has, do we have the uh, yep. updated proposal? 6078, 10, 16, and 14. So they're looking to increase uh, our payments 10 percent in 20, uh, 16 in 21, and 14 and 22. And 14 and 22. What currently we're paying 50, 54, 54, 000. 54, five, something like that, 54, one. Then we're going to go up to 60, 70, and then 80. One, what? one of the comments I'd like to make before we get into this is Chief Greno and I were part of a uh, assessment program for regional dispatch uh, several years ago. It, it involved when uh, the 911 changes were coming into effect. And we walked into a room to hear the analysis and the proposal, I don't know, just blew us out of the chair. Yeah. To go to a, a civilian <coughs> dispatch program uh -huh. with 911 answering for the town of Whitman was the wrong side of $250,000 per year. And we walked away shaking our heads saying that's not going to happen. Hmm. Uh, or a city, yeah. The need to have coverage for fire 20%. is really essential because once two calls are in, there's nobody left in the station. Right. So Holbrook answers those calls, assesses where people are. Uh, as Tim mentioned earlier, a call goes out for another group call, and they're able to handle those calls and dispatch them without this agreement. It, it, uh, we'd be seeing a lot of instances where we're, we're taking two calls and then we're close to calls. So I look at it this way. Um, just like when we built a new police station and, and we built a new high school, um, the regional communication center, which services the towns of Whitman, Abington, Holbrook, Canton, Sharon, there's one more in there, I think, Rockland, um, has recently been awarded, a, I believe it's a four, just over a $4 million grant from State 911 to build a new facility. So what they're doing is, is, is they're getting ready to break ground in the spring, and they're looking to, um, they, they know, just like we knew, there was going to be increased operational costs with the new facility. So they're planning ahead and trying to get their, their, um, their arms around it and move forward so they don't come back because they can't turn the lights on because the assessments aren't high enough or whatever. So currently right now we pay, like Frank said, 54, I think it's 54.4 or 54.5. Fiscal 20, they're looking to go up to 60,000 and then 70,000 and 21 and then 80,000 and 22. Um, I equate it go to this. Go up that amount or that's the total? To that amount. To that to amount. amount. Okay. So I equate it to this. Um, we... The average, what we were paying before we went to a regional dispatch center to have people answer, to, to have firefighters answer our phones and answer the radios, um, today would be $329,389. The average firefighter is right around $82,000. By not renewing the agreement and going back to doing our own dispatching, you would then take a firefighter off the floor and put him back on the desk and that firefighter would then be stuck on that desk, and the town not would then be paying a little over three hundred twenty thousand dollars, like like a year, in firefighter salaries, which is a waste of services because that guy's talents are on the floor. Right. The floor. Um, this this is funded through the ambulance revenue account line. Um, you know, I I. Like Frank said, at first they were a bit higher than this, like coming in, and I went back to them and said, look, we, you don't know what we're facing in 20. I, there's no way that I can bring this forward and say, what say you? But I get what they're talking about, I get what they're saying, and w with every new building, you're going to see increases, and this is what they're planning for. Okay. So, is there a motion? So moved. Second to enter the agreement under those yeah. terms. Yeah. Is there a second? There's no break. Motion or a second. Any discussion? Um, yeah. Just um, that this is going to be subject to funding right. at right. the annual town right. meeting. There you go. You just answered my question. Mm -hmm. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Abstentions?
Thanks, Chief. After the request of Aaron Johnson to be appointed to the position of member of the Whitman Cultural Council for a three-year term to June 30th, 2020, in order to fill an existing vacancy. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Finally, consider the request of Dinesh Kumar Patel to approve an additional all-alcohol package good store liquor license to be assigned to DJ's Country Store. Mr. Patel here. Okay, Frank, you want to uh, yes, I, I introduce this topic? I'd like to make it clear up front. This is a license we don't currently have the authority to issue. Um, each community uh, is limited by population to what licenses they can offer. Uh, we are able to offer 15 Section 12 licenses, which is on premise consumption. 15, uh, I'm sorry, three off-premise, uh, five, for the sake of understanding, five package store licenses. The process to go beyond that would require a home rule process. We would, the Board of Selectmen would first have to determine that it's in the interest of the town to expand. We then would have to determine how many licenses in addition we're asking for. And as the number goes up from one to others, the uh, reception of the state is, it declines. Uh, we would have to present this to a town meeting vote and would then have to place it on the ballot. If it's approved at the ballot and town meeting, we then have to request our state representative through that election process to file a petition for home rule, which means asking the legislature to make a specific law to allow Whitman to have more than five licenses. It's an onerous process. It's certainly not something I would entertain doing uh, at any time other than an annual town meeting. It's just the cost of the election would be about $7,000. And then I guess the other question that we have to ask is where that leaves us as a community. I have at least three current uh, licensees or, or people who wish to be licensees seeking an all alcohol license. Three beyond Mr. Patel. Uh, including Mr. Right. Patel. So that bearing in mind the uh, process that's involved and what we have to ask for, we would then have to determine a process for allocating the licenses. Typically, it's on a first come, first saved, first served basis, but uh, that would all depend on how the board wants to approach this. If, in fact, we feel that we need well, more than five package so the stores. The question out there is, and yeah, I mean, is there a need for the, the first store? question is, yeah. The you package store. <laughs> The package store licenses do not increase under statute until you pass 25,000 residents. We don't have a seasonal population to adjust by, so we, don't, we can't go by that. Well, we have 14,000 residents. Right. So we'd have to grow another 11,000 to qualify under current law. I mean, I just want to show the what the variance is between what we have and what's being asked. So if we went through this process and then we happen to get an extra license, it could not be earmarked for him. It would have to be into some sort of a lottery to I, everybody. You know, I have to look more at the, the submission process uh, for the license. What I haven't looked at that piece of it yet. I, I would kind of think where we're looking for a license that may be available for one of three people as opposed to three licenses, then yeah, I think we have to look at how we allocate that. Right. So a couple of decisions to make. One would be whether or not we believe that the town needs another 
to go through this whole process, does the town need another liquor license? And I, and I think that's that separate of the location and, and the person. Yeah. It's just in general. Yeah. So we think we need more liquor licenses. Yeah. Uh, Frank, question. Uh, uh, where is where, is this the old Johnson, the old restaurant up on 58 Rotary? Yes, Clayton's. Clayton's, Clayton's the old Clayton's. 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 Currently, our licenses are located <coughs> on Bedford Street below Temple. Uh, in the center of town, at Temple Street, next to the yeah. fire station. I'm trying to think of where the third one is. Regal. Regal. Regal, thank you. Which is on the east side of town beyond the tracks. We have three now. Yes. Fairly well so. So they're right distributed. Um, the argument, well, I won't make their argument for them. I think perhaps they may want to. So, yes. so this is going to be the general argument. store turn into a liquor store. That's what you're looking to do? No. The general store no, that would be the restaurant? In addition to what it's doing, into addition. would be able to offer a full... And alcohol. it has beer and wine. It now. currently has a package of beer and wine, so we would be adding it to the product line. And we've had two other people in, in the previously who was asked this, and we've denied them, saying that we're only allowed to have three. Well, right, we've Frank? said they aren't available. Not it's available. the response we've given everyone who's asked. So either we ask for three or none. Well, I think we, no. I'm conceptually, do we have to decide? Yeah. So we can't just uh, say. You know, do we need one for Mr. Patel? Well, I, I believe the petitioner, uh, 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 it would be it would be granted to them because we have the petitioner asking for that license, and then we'd have to have to explain the reasons why it should go to us and not somebody else. It seems to me when they did it um, in Dugsbury, it was, uh, Osborne's got one, yeah. and they had to go through the legislature, and it was earmarked right. specifically for them. Long before my time, but well, I, I do have to say that there were two other we have told other people not that have we have told other people a license. not to permission. Yeah. Yeah. And not we've to told petition. them no, it's not available. Okay, and, and so we would have to get back to them and say if you want one, this is the process, oh. and they would petition also follow the same procedures. Well, this is the first uh, request that included. Would you consider increasing the number of licenses to accommodate us? That has not come up in the past. Uh, how did it come up if it didn't come up to increase the number of licenses? Because this group decided they wanted to ask for us to. Uh, they want to the other, the, uh, the other, the other two people accepted your. Accepted note. the fact that they are not available. Yeah. Yes, and they did originally, but then they came back and said, "Time out." Time out. <laughs> they did some research. Yeah. So basically. We have to be convinced that we need another liquor store in, the, in town. Yes. Right. And the guidelines the state uses is just based on population. 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 Question, uh, would, uh, are the neighbors to the business uh, involved in the process at all? Yeah. Any liquor license includes a hearing and hearing from right. the of others Cause, uh, in any church yeah. within a Sure. So, I can remember when uh, the previous owners of the restaurant wanted to get beer and wine to serve good lunch, and, and there was a big meeting on it right. down. At, I think the Board of Health. I think was, they mm -hmm. dealt with whatever, and there was a lot of complaints. But finally, you know, <coughs> they convinced neighbors that no, people weren't going to be sitting around drinking. It's not that type of a place. It's a restaurant. If you want a lunch or a dinner, they wanted to open up for lunch or dinner, would like to have a glass of beer or something or a glass of wine. Well, so they actually got it. But this, that was, here. But that was a restaurant. That was for the yeah. My recollection is the last time we issued a license, we had, I think, four different people from that area yeah, coming in to neighbors, express yeah. their right. that was, concern. That was a whole different thing. That's not yeah. asking yeah. for a yeah, that's, license. That was just for the... I mean, he's already selling beer and wine. Right. 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 So I... So I three that have been here have been here forever, right? That yes. Like the original three. Did Clayton, so, did Clayton's ever sell? No. No. Like, no it was no, not like a hardware. It was a hardware store. All right. of those right. stores, by the way, well, After except Regal. Regal, all of those stores have changed hands over the years. Yes. But they've all, But well, the purchase included a transfer of the liquor license. So even if we agree to this, town meeting has to, uh, it has to go to a, a vote? Town meeting has to say yes, and the electorate have to say yes. 
Well, and the state has to say. And, then and the state has to say. You know, it's, it's not guaranteed early. that we do all this. It yeah, goes yeah. to the legislature, and the legislature. The first, sure the first step is though is for Mr. Patel to convince the five of us that Correct. we need another liquor store in town. I, so I that's, a, that's simple yeah. enough. The right? first of many hurdles. Right. <laughs> I think to, what he would convince me is to allow the taxpayers and the residents of Whitman to say yes or no. I would agree to let them make the decision. Oh, it's their here, town. He's here to speak, perhaps. Right. He has something to say. That's the way I look at it. Okay. It's your turn. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Joel Richmond. I was part of the previous ownership of DJs. Uh, we took it over, uh, I guess, a little over three years ago, <coughs> excuse me, and arranged for the sale of the business to uh, Danny Patel, who is <coughs> standing right next to me. When we had taken over the store uh, previously, the entire inside was done over quite well, um, was renovated, and it's a convenience store. It has a package beer and wine license, and it's, since Mr. Patel took it over, there's been an addition of other areas of, of merchandise. I will say this at the outset, that Mr. Patel is in the process of acquiring the property. When that, that purchase is completed, he intends to do a nice overhaul of the exterior of the building. I mean, it's a, kind of a very nice neighborhood that they're in, and the store's a little old and shabby looking. So there's going to be a nice upgrade to the outside, either siding or painting, new fence, striping, uh, new parking lot, and what have you. Uh, Mr. Patel has over 30 years' experience in uh, selling packaged uh, alcohol. He currently owns a store in uh, North Quincy called Atlantic Market. It's similar to DJ's. It's a full-service neighborhood market that has liquor. He owns Canton Village uh, Liquors at Cobb's Corner. Uh, they also own Hancock uh, uh, Convenience and down a storefront, yeah, in, in, in a storefront of business in downtown Quincy that has full liquor and several other stores that have beer and wine. Um, we we talk about the, you know, why the addition of, of liquor. Well, it's a matter of, of competing and staying effective in the, in the marketplace for small businesses, notwithstanding com existing competition. There were so-called mega stores, out-of-state mega stores that are moving into Massachusetts since they opened up the amount of liquor licenses one can own. It used to be three, I think there's what, seven now. Stores like uh, Total Wine and Liquors and Wines and More, these are supermarket-sized stores and they're very formidable. So in, in adding the addition of uh, uh, liquor to the store adds another full, s little more spectrum to the shoppers. They come in now, right now, the neighborhood, they'll buy their beer, their wine, their groceries, uh, party goods, and if they need liquor, they have to go to another store. Also, if you, you know, if you look at the list of, uh, I, I don't know if you have that map, but I included a map of where all the liquor licenses are currently located, all on the south side of the, of the town. Yeah. You know, from Regal uh, to Temple, Whippin, Whitman Convenience, there's uh, three package uh, liquor licenses and four other uh, convenience stores with beer and wine, all on the south side of the town. We are the only store on the north side of the town, the only store from Route 130, uh, 123 and 58 at the Abington Rockland line all the way into Hanson. You have to go down to, I think it's Mayette's Country Store in Hanson and uh, 1458 Liquors, which is owned by Luke's in downtown, uh, in that little shopping center in Hanson. So I, I also included a, a post delivery map, which I obtained. Uh, we had a grand opening when after Danny took over and did a mailing. There was over, around 2,200 <coughs> addresses in the neighborhood surrounding DJs right now. That's the, the community that you're going to be s serving. The, while the state, one of the state, uh, the the, uh, the features that the state looks at in granting licenses need. Is there a, a need for this particular community? Well, there is nothing up at that part of town. P people who are commuting down in Route 58 don't necessarily go down to Route 27 and vice versa. Also, should the license be granted, the existing beer and wine license would have to be surrendered and become available to somebody else who might want it as well. So it, it does, it gives one additional liquor license, but also puts a beer and wine license back into circulation as well. How many of those do we have? Five, right? 
off premise beer and wine. Um, Fine for that. We have that's all alcohol. We have five on each. We have five available? No, we have five. We're, we don't have any available. Correct. Beer and wine only. Yeah, there's five, uh, five beer and wine right now in, in, in use and three liquor. And we, we, we have one of the five, so there's four other uh, beer and wine licenses. There's four other that are being in use? Yeah, that are being used right now, and there's none available, as, as I understand. So should we get the, the liquor license, of course, we'd have to surrender the beer and wine, and that becomes, that goes into domain, whoever, you know, is looking for it. Mr. Chairman, a question. Um, yes. Mr. Patella, are you uh, affiliated, involved, or in any capacity uh, connected to any of the other Whitman licenses at all? No. Okay. Question. you have a question, Dan? Huh? When I think of Whitman, I don't think of North Whitman and South Whitman. <laughs> east and west. I think of east and west with <laughs> Right. I think of the, 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 the part of town that mm. is uh, east of Route 18 and the part of town that's west of Route 18. Yeah. If we look at, and all of the uh, all liquor license are, mm -hmm. except for the one on Route 18, are east of Route 18. Right. And there's one pretty close to you, right. half a mile away, okay, right. or a quarter of a mile away. Right. Um, my first thought then when I when I, I, I hear the petition is that no, I, we don't need another all liquor license mm. on our side of town right. within a quarter of a mile of the other one. It just doesn't make didn't make mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense to me. Right. That um, that's just a I live on that side of town. Okay. Um, I'm not being I'm not being a, like a, a prohibition guy. I'm just saying <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, well, we considering look yeah. considering the restrictions that we have if. If the state, in its wisdom, thinks that adding an additional um, liquor license would mean that we should have ten thousand more people in town, or what was it, fifteen thousand? Yeah, I mm -hmm. I actually read the wrong uh, what chart. The next increment is four licenses, which is at um, where are we? fifteen to sixteen thousand. Well, that's not as bad as and then not as drastic. The next one is twenty one thousand. Well, I think that's a big difference. So there is one. There that, is one coming up. That is a big difference. If we cry. Yes. And, you know, the state actually they keep throwing it out there that they're trying to reform the system and oh, yeah. make it easier for us <coughs> to add mm -hmm. um, and, you know, by our own decision, probably a town meeting vote. But the, state being the state, it still hasn't uh -huh. changed. The governor's uh, the reform bill that the governor presented included relief from the limitations, but it was struck down in the right. conference committee. Well, actually, that makes your correction makes some sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it makes more sense to me to. Yeah, I was say, looking at the yeah. wrong column. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dan's suggestion is to kick the can down the road to the town meeting. Right. I mean, right. it's if the, if the taxpayers of Whitman, if they if the custom is if they feel that we need another one, right, right. then they'll vote for it. If they feel as though no, what we have well, is enough. Well, 200 people will vote for it. Huh? 200 people or 150 people <laughs> will vote for it and not vote We're going to have well, a huge No, I'm talking about an election, huh? We're going to have a big time. Then you have to have an election. We're going to have at least 700. Then you can, well, then, no, then you need an election. So. Yeah, it'll be on the town meeting. It'll be on the town you know, warrant for the election. No, it's a question. I don't know. It's, it's, up, it's up to you guys. Do you want to kick <gasps> it? Do you want to say, Question. no, I don't think we need one? I'll make a motion that says, no, I don't think we need another one. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second for discussion. Okay, discuss. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with the state guidelines. I think that we can follow them. And, you know, if. Uh, Population increases, which I think uh, you know, Mr. Rosen and Mr. Egan are doing a good job helping us with that. We get over that threshold, and there'll be one that'll be available for first come, first serve. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy with that. I think that there's plenty of opportunity in this town right now to get alcohol. 
I, I agree. Ready? Having grown up right there across the street, I uh, exactly. Yeah. We all not have had to yeah. search far for a. Uh, it didn't bother you. You had to walk out pleasant. But I had to go down the rain or end for okay. a package store or <laughs> down that down that end. Um, and, the, right. and the guidelines are set by the state, so I would say stick with them. I have a couple questions. Frank, can you tell me roughly how many people we have in the town right now? 14.5. Um, it, it, it's like 14.5. It, it might be 14.7. So it's close I to mean, the, the number goes up and down. I, I don't know. So it's a knocking uh, on the door. Anyway. Certainly, I can. As, as we look but, at it. But as far as I can remember, it's been about 14. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, so the, the next comment I have is, we had this discussion about retail marijuana, and we all decided it was in the best interest to let the people decide. And and that this board suggested that we let town meeting decide that question. Mm. So, I mean, if the community wants another Conceptually, license, actually, that was a big difference, though. We're not I, I, saying I we want to go from being a dry town to being a town that's going to have alcohol. I'm just putting it out there that, that <laughs> we had this discussion concerning yeah. a similar instance. So, uh, I think what Scott is saying is not that similar. Yeah, I, I it's not going from I a high town to a really high town. I, I respectfully yeah. disagree, but okay. that's okay. okay. Um, really if we are in the business of letting the people decide, then we should let the people decide. And my feelings exactly. Well, we were voted to do something, uh, some sort of a function up here, and help them <laughs> along the way. Right. Maybe we should, you know, if you, if you want, maybe you should get more people to move to women. <laughs> um, <coughs> but that's just my take on it. You know, I'll, I'll go with whatever the board wants. But I just think if we're letting the people decide their town, we should. Let so you may be the deciding vote there, Kyle. <laughs> Well, I kind of let you know what I felt at the beginning. I, yeah. I uh, like Randy, I live in the neighborhood. Right. And I've never felt, a nimba, I never huh? felt like I had to a nimba, walk huh? up Route 50. I'm closer to 58 than I am to, to Clayton's than I am to Regal, but I never felt like I had to, that it was a big inconvenience yeah. to go to Regal. Also, remember, this is the first hurdle of many more. Right. right. But yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, I also hear you. remember that it also sets it up yeah. that um, the next gentleman that comes into us who says, Maybe you need another one on top of that. Yeah. yeah. And so where, where are we drawing the line on kicking things down to town meeting? Or where are we going to well, say, you know, I, we're here for a certain reason? I, and, and I would suggest that maybe uh, if we don't like to kick the can down to town meeting, we should change the form of government that we have. But until we do that, that's what we have. Okay, we have a, we have a motion on the floor um, whether or not to set a process in motion to uh, search for permission to have an extra all liquor license in town, one that, that uh, does not conform with the state's guidelines presently. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, uh, in the favor, and the motion is to deny. A, yeah. It's to deny. deny. The favor, the motion is to deny. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That uh, uh, old business, Board of Selectmen handbook. Frank. Uh, we distributed that last week, I believe, last meeting, and right. it was a draft, uh, suggested draft for a. Board of Selectmen handbook that would provide basic um, guidance for board operations. Could, could I ask that we push this to the next agenda, to the yes. agenda for the next meeting? I, I haven't had a chance to, since I got back from my travels. We'll put it back on. I haven't had a chance to. We haven't looked at this. No, I haven't. Is there anything else? Anything else that needs to come before us? Can I start one? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how familiar the rest of the board is, but there was a young man suffering from uh, brain cancer. His name's Mason Giobi. Uh, Friday, Mason came home from the hospital after two months, and the display this town put out oh, for him. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I want to thank every member of this town. I think that's why we're all up here is because of a town like that. 
I want to thank the police and fire and, and, and the sheriff's department and, and every town organization that, that brought this warrior home, and, and he really is a warrior. He's, he has battled since, I think, almost birth, right, right John? Um, amazing story, but just how the town came together is equally as amazing. And uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart for letting me sit up here and represent a town like that. Good, good call, Randy, and thanks for bringing it to the, to the people's attention at the meeting. Motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We're done. You know, whack it.